Hello, and thanks for joining me again at the Time Between Times. Here we are for another tale. So let's gather around the fireplace. Let's pretend that no matter what time it is, no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, that you have now gathered at the Time Between Times. The time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. The time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin. This is the time that people see ghosts. This is the time that people see lights in the sky. This is the time that people tell stories. So forget what's going on in your life. Sit down, relax and listen. Because today we have a tale, one of the oldest, most fascinating and greatest tales from all of Wales. Tale of Guyon and the Witch. Many, many years ago, at the time between times, in a place not far from where you live, there lived a witch. She had a bent back and hooked claw like hands, and she talked in a voice like this. Her name was Keridwen. Now Keridwen had everything. All the villagers were terrified of her. She could cast spells. She could issue curses. She was a wise woman as well, and a particularly bad person. But she wanted to be the cleverest, most intelligent, all-knowing witch in all the land. So she reached atop her bookshelf one day and opened a book, blowing away the dust. <sighs> she found a spell as ancient as the hills. It said... How to be the cleverest witch in all the world. Take three spider's legs and put them in a pot. She rushed out to the garden, found a spider and plucked out three of its legs, placing them in a pot. Take four whole frogs and put them in a pot. She rushed out down to the swamp and found four whole frogs and put them in a pot. Take six ants and put them in a pot. She reached under a stone and plucked up six ants, dropping them in a pot. Now stir the pot, always clockwise, never anti-clockwise, always stirring, never eating, never sleeping, never drinking, never stopping, for a year and a day. A year and a day? A year and a day? You think I'm going to stir a pot for a year and a day with no break and then... Take three drops, not one, not two, not four, but three drops of the potion and three drops only and become the cleverest witch in all the world. <laughs> you think I'm going to take a year of stirring? No, I'll get someone else to do it. Keridwen opened the door, walked down the path into the village. All the villagers were terrified of Keridwen and all the doors slammed as she walked. She walked to the area near the woods where the children played and they all ran into the forest, all except one. One child, whose name was Guyon. He was tall, with bright red hair that stretched to the sky. Hello, Keridwen, he said. Hello, how are you? Come here, Guyon. Yes, OK. Guyon walked towards Keridwen. You must come to my house. There, there is a huge pot, and you must stir that pot. Never stopping, never eating, never drinking, never sleeping. For a year and a day, always clockwise, never anti-clockwise. Do you understand? Then I will drink three drops of the potion, not one, not two, not four, but three, and become the cleverest witch in all the world. I understand. Yes, I I'll do it, said Guion, for he was not the brightest of children. They went back to Keridwen's house, and there Guion stood in front of the pot started to stir and stir and stir and round and round the potion went and the hours turned to days and the days turned to weeks and the weeks turned to months and still Guion stirred and stirred and stirred and Keridren would come in every day to see how he was doing and leave him to it until a whole year passed and there was only one day to go until Keridren would come to drink three drops of the potion, not one, not two, not four, but three, and become the cleverest witch in all the world. But on that final night, Keridwen knew there would be trouble, for there was to be a storm so loud it would feel like the gods were throwing boulders in the sky. Guion, 
Tonight there will be a storm. No matter what you hear, no matter what happens, no matter what occurs, you will not stop staring. Do you understand? Oh yes, I understand. I will not stop staring. Said Guillon, stirring round and round the bubbling, boiling pot. And at four o'clock, just like Kerdwin said, the rain started to fall until it beat on the roof of the house like thunder. Then the thunder started, drums in the distance, until they came so loud it felt like the gods were throwing stones in the sky. Then the lightning started, so bright that it lit up the sky like it was day. But still Guion stirred, and stirred, and stirred, until at midnight, directly when the clock struck twelve, as Guion was stirring and stirring and stirring, a huge bolt of lightning shot from the sky and hit Kerrigan's house with a bang. The whole house shook back and forth. The books fell from a bookcase, but still Guion stirred and stirred and stirred. But the pot started to tip, and three drops of the potion flew through the air and landed on Guion's hand. <laughs> There's three drops of potion, and they're on my hand. What shall I do? Oh, I know. I'll drink them. Oh! <clears throat> Guion drank the three potions, the three drops of the potion, and then his mind started to clear. It was like clouds parting to reveal the brightest sun. <sighs> and suddenly, Guion knew the answer to everything. He knew every song that had ever been sung, every poem ever performed, every tale, every, every tale ever told. Guion knew it. I'm, I'm the cleverest boy in all the world. I'm the cleverest boy in all the world, said Guion. <gasps> But then he looked around, for there behind him he did not see. There she was. Keridwen, the witch. What is going on here? said Keridwen. Oh, 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 and there was a bolt of lightning that and it chopped on the sky and it hit the roof, and three drops landed on my hand, and I I I I I drunk them. You did what? I drunk them. Keridwen's rage knew no bounds. She had waited over a year for this day, and now Guion had spoiled her potion and had drunk it, thus becoming the cleverest man or boy in the whole world. Keridwen rushed at Guion, her rage burning to the sky. And Guion looked at her. He didn't know what to do, and then he knew exactly what to do. He clicked his fingers, and Guion vanished, and in exchange of Guion, on the floor there appeared a small, white, loppy-eared rabbit with a twitching nose. <laughs> the rabbit rushed under Keridwen's legs, whoop, out the door, hopped over the garden wall, and rushed down to the forest. Keridwen turned around, I will catch him, I will catch him, and in her mind she uttered the words of a spell as ancient as the hills, and turned into a great big black hunting dog. Woo! The hunting dog rushed after the rabbit, jumping over the wall, down into the forest. The rabbit ran and ran and ran. The hunting dog bounded and bounded until it almost catched the rabbit. But the rabbit reached at the river, and the river flowed really quickly. And Guion cast a spell in his mind and turned into a salmon. And the salmon leapt into the river and swam away. The great big black hunting dog bounded to the riverside, saw the salmon swim away, and then, boom, changed into an otter. And the otter chased the fish all the way down, chasing the salmon, until it came to a great lake. And the salmon leapt out of the lake and was about to fall back into the water to be caught by the otter, when, boom, it flashed, changed into a small bird which flew up to the clouds, its wings taking it higher and higher and higher as the otter crashed into the water. But then, out of the water, there flew an eagle, which reached for the sky, chasing the bird over the clouds, over the trees, trying to catch it in its talons, and it was just about to do so when Guion had one last trick up his sleeve. And in a flash of light, the bird vanished. 
and Guillon changed into a small, solitary, singular seed that fell all the way through the sky and landed in a field full of seeds. Millions and millions and millions of seeds. The eagle floated round and round and round, but then carried her knew one more thing to do. And in a flash of light, she changed into a chicken and landed in the field and started to peck at all the seeds, eating them one after the other. Round and round she went, as the day grew long and the sun grew old. Still she pecked at the seeds, until eventually, boom, she gobbled up the seed that was Guillaume. <laughs> there was a flash of light, and the chicken turned back to Keridwen the witch. <laughs> that will teach him to drink my potion. I will need to do it again but I will soon become the cleverest witch in all the world. But then suddenly, something started to happen. Something that Keridwen did not expect. Her stomach grew bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then pop! Out popped the baby. Keridwen caught the baby. The baby looked at Keridwen. Keridwen looked at the baby. The baby had its thumb in its mouth, but took it out and said, Hello, Mum. <gasps> Keridwen grew so angry, he thought the mountains would crumble to the ground. No! You! This baby now has all the powers that Guion once had. She took the baby, she put it in a sack and carried the sack to the highest cliff overlooking the sea and threw it around her head three times before launching it far out to sea where it landed with a plop. And that would be the end of our tale. But on that day, that day of all days, there were two fishermen fishing far out to sea on a small boat. All day they had cast their rods and caught nothing. But then, just as they returned to go home, one of the fishermen cast his rod caught a sack. He opened the sack and there inside was the baby. Hello dad, said the baby. What? What's going on here? I don't know, but all I know is that Keridwen the witch is trying to kill me. Please, please look after me. Please take me home and look after me. I'll do that, said the fisherman. Put the baby under his coat and rode back to the village. Took the baby into his house and hid the baby. Days turned to weeks, weeks turned to months, months turned to years. And the baby grew up, became a boy, and then a young man. And the fisherman had named the baby Taliesin, he of the silver tongue, and he became the greatest storyteller the world had ever known, for he knew every tale that had ever been told, every song that had ever been sung, every poem that had ever been performed, and he became the storyteller to the great King Arthur, and people from all over Wales and Prodine joined him to listen to his tales. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the story of how Taliesin, the greatest storyteller ever, became Taliesin. And that's the famous story of Guion and the Witch. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you do. And I hope you're enjoying this series of tales. I'm trying to put them out every week. Um, one a week, hopefully on a Sunday if I can. Um, please, please leave a nice comment if you've got one. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. The more subscribers I have, it makes me feel like I'm not talking to myself anyway. But I hope you're enjoying this. Um, as I said, take care. 
and join me again at the time between times, whenever you can, where we can leave our cares behind and listen to stories being told.